Hi, and welcome to The Mentored Engineer. In this video, we're gonna explain why this weight travels like it does as the train goes up the roller coaster lift hill. You can see here in the video that the train is loading up and the weight moved a whole bunch. So now we're in the lift part and it's staying steady here. And then it's, it's getting to the top, it starts unloading. So we noticed at the beginning of the video that weight moved a lot, but then at the end it didn't seem to unload as much as it loaded up. So there's gotta be something going on there. Keep watching to find out. Hey, if you like what you see so far, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe and click that notification bell so I can annoy you at least once a week. All right, so to understand why this moves, we need to understand a lot about chain lifts on roller coasters and what they're doing. So the first part we need to talk about is the path of the chain. Uh, the chain here is drawn in red and it starts here with a drive gear. This is what attaches to the motor. That's what actually powers the train going up the hill. Goes around the tensioner sprocket here and that can slide in and out. And the weight is attached to that and it drops accordingly to the chain stretching. Then it goes over an idler here and then goes up the lift hill, goes over the top over an idler pulley, and then comes back down to the drive. Fairly simple. No, it's not actually. So with uh, roller coaster chain lifts, uh, one thing that can happen is the chain can break and it, it's very rare if it ever happens. Uh, usually they do preventative maintenance and stuff on the chains. Uh, they keep them well greased, uh, so it just doesn't happen. Um, but heaven forbid this ever happens and the chain breaks, you're not falling down the roller coaster. They all have what is called anti-rollback devices. And what happens is um, there is another mechanism uh, by, by law that will catch the car from falling back to the station. The other issue with uh, chain drive braking is that it can actually come and back and hit the uh, riders. It can you know, swing up anytime there's so much energy built up in a, in a cable, in a chain, even fiberglass rods that are under tension. Uh, they go and they go everywhere. Uh, so the chain, if it's split up here, can actually bust back and hit people in the face. That's not a good thing. Uh, it can also cause uh, major damage to the structures, uh, which is uh, also detrimental to the ride's integrity. So they actually have a different type of chain on a lift hill. Let me show you how that works. A traditional chain is like what you see here in the video where it's holding up the tensioner. It's just simple um, outer and inner links. So here you have a cross section of your chain. You've got outer links, then you've got inner links, and then you've got this uh, uh, tube here. And that is actually what the um, the train catches on, it, they call it a chain dog, and it actually loops in and uh, connects to the chain in there. Uh, it's spring loaded so it'll pop down and pop up. So that's what you hear when you click, 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 get on the lift hill, and then it'll, you know, grab it and pull it uh, up the rest of the way. Uh, the lift hill chain actually has these, uh, I've drawn them in red, but they're, they're cams on there, they're little rollers, little bearings that will actually roll up next to the uh, lift hill. And they actually fit in C channels that go on each side of this. So you can imagine it's a, you know, an, a, a track uh, right here next to the train up in the center. And you can actually see these if you're in the front car of a roller coaster, as you're going up and you hear the click, 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 you can just look down and see the chain that's moving at the same speed you are. And you see that the ends are always covered it's never just a chain out, you know, or a chain guide to keep it straight side to side. It's always got uh, a C channel so you can't see in on each side. And that's what you're seeing when you look down right there. 
So that has a couple things. First of all, prevents the chain from breaking and hitting people in the face, but it also allows the uh, chain to follow the curve of the tracks very nicely without any extra friction uh, from the um, from it, it rubbing or anything in it's, so it's not causing wear uh, that kind of thing so can follow the, the the configuration of the track which is not a you know straight line all right so now that we understand how the chain works let's look at how the chain is tensioned all right so it's a fixed length around this course right except the chain isn't a fixed length what happens is, is we need to be able to tension the chain and we want to keep it tight. And one of the best ways to do that is with weights. So here we have this pulley that slides uh, this way and it will always have this weight on it. So that is one weight is pulling this way, two times the tension is pulling that way. So by definition, the tension in the chain has to be half of what this weight is. Now let's focus on how the chain tension fluctuates as the train actually engages with it and then goes up and then releases from it. All right, so as previously discussed, when we're just sitting here, the chain tension, as we measure it here right before the drive, that's where we wanna get the best measurement because that's where we gotta put our, our power input into it. It's gonna be this tension over two. That's just the chain sitting there. Now, theoretically, if we start running the chain, it'll increase a little bit just because of the friction in the system. All right, so we'll see a little bit of uh, tension increase, but not a significant amount. What we're gonna have is the train coming in and start attaching to the chain with the chain dogs. And we're not gonna have a sudden load. It's not gonna go from unloaded to suddenly loaded because we're only pulling up essentially like one of the cars at first and then two and then three and then four and also the angle that you're pulling them up is changing in that first little bit. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a uh, parabolic increase and parabolic decrease as we uh, get the chain all the way on the lift. Then theoretically between um, making the angle here and going all the way up, it's going to have uh, a flat area on top. And then as you get up to the top, your angles chase changing the load that you're trying to push up is changing so we're going to have a very similar thing here to this so now that we know our tension profile throughout the uh, loading and unloading cycle of this train going up we noticed that the loading was much more dramatic than the unloading and there's a very interesting reason as to why that is and it all comes down to this equation right here that our deflection of the chain is gonna be equal to the um, deflection of all the materials in the train. And we're also gonna have some pin deflection. Now, I didn't give you the equation here because it's, uh, it's quite big. And uh, just know that pin deflection contributes to this. So pin deflection would be how this the pin deflects in this chain right here. You can imagine that if we're pulling, the chain is gonna bow this way for the, the bottom pin and the middle pin here, it's gonna bow up and this one's gonna bow down and so on and so forth. Now deflections here may only be like five thousandths, ten thousandths of an inch tops. So we're not talking a large uh, component here. What we are concerned about is this factor right here of uh, our deflection equals the, the tension times the length of the chain times A which is the area, the cross-sectional area of cutting the chain and looking at, uh, you know, if we were to cut it in a hacksaw and look at the end, we're looking at that area. And then multiplying that by uh, E, which is the youngest modulus, which is how a material will react when you load it, how much it will stretch. Okay, so we know with these terms that our our cross-sectional area and our Young's modulus will be the same throughout. Our tension is gonna change as we just drew up over here. This is our tension plot over time. But from the points that we're concerned about, you know, when it reaches B, it's just on a constant uh, section of the lift, which is by far the greatest area, um, it's, it's steady. So we're gonna treat that as a constant. 
So let's talk about this last variable here, and that's length. Now you may be saying to yourself, Corey, that chain is a constant length, just constant, right? And the answer to that is no. Yes, it is exactly the same number of chains the whole time it goes around, but the length definitely does change. All right, so Wild Eagle is roughly a 200 foot tall roller coaster, and I think the lift hill is right about 60 degrees. So uh, if we just do point to point of the amount of chain that's between uh, where the, chain, the train first attaches top and back down, that is, I think it's about 460 feet. That's the length at the, the beginning. All right, now as you go up, the length of that chain, uh, that's contributing weight. In fact, uh, a, a chain that big to haul that much load is probably in the neighborhood of 10 pounds per foot. That's heavy. So if we have 460 feet of chain, that's 4,600 pounds of chain, and that's gonna affect our tension load as well. But we're always lifting the same amount of chain up the entire time. However, we're not lifting the train up the amount of that entire amount of time. So what I mean by that is when you're down here and you're connected, you have 460 feet of chain that's pulling this train up. So all of that is loaded. When you get to the top, you only have the 230 feet and then you have zero tension back here. So our length is changing as we're going up the hill. So every foot that it goes up a hill, our deflection is actually lowering a little bit because we are not tensioning all that part of the chain. As a result, the entire section, when it's in the linear section of our lift hill, the weight will actually be slowly moving up. And I'm gonna show you this video, except in the middle part where it's being lifted up, I'm gonna speed it up to four times. So you can see here it's loading up And now I've sped it up and you can see it slowly going up and then it unloads. So you can see there that it actually was moving very slowly the entire time. Slowly enough that at regular speed, you really can't notice the difference, but you can see it when it's sped up. This is actually a very good phenomenon that happens in roller coaster design. So I remember Colossus at Magic Mountain uh, back before it became Twisted Colossus you would journey from the station to the lift hill and it would take, uh, you know, like a solid 20, 25 seconds or so to get to the lift hill. But when you actually got there, you had some speed and you'd actually run up the lift hill and then you'd bang. And I was thinking to myself, man, that's a, a big uh, load of jerk on that chain when you finally get caught. And then it dawned on me as I was researching this topic that the chain wasn't actually taking the load. See, what was happening was the chain was actually stretching. And when you have 400 feet of chain, your chain actually stretches, uh, you know, like 18 to 24 inches. I mean, it's a lot. That's why you see this weight move. In fact, the weight will move at half the rate that the chain lengthens, uh, simply because of the two to one ratio with the sprocket. So what happens is you would actually go up and start to load up that sprocket and you would actually just kind of roll back because the chain hadn't picked up that load yet and then you'd fall back on the anti-rollback device and then you know within a second or so you would actually go up the lift hill because the chain finally engaged uh, but you still had to move a lot of chain before you got enough force to pull the train up so what i thought it was a defect in the ride uh, actually was kind of a safety device to make sure that the chain would never break. All right, well, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching and please feel free to like, share and subscribe.